It was billed as evangelicalism's royal wedding. The ministry <laughs> leader and radio host Nancy DeMoss announced her marriage to Christian literary giant Robert Walgamuth. Everybody wondered how marriage would change them. Well, it did change their home, thanks to Nancy's water disaster, but they also believe <laughs> it has changed them for the better, and they join us today here on The Harvest Show. So glad to have oh, you both with us. Thank you. Thank what fun you. to be with you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let's let's ask the question that everybody was asking. How has marriage changed you? It's none of your business, that actually. Right, thank you. <laughs> oh, it's been wonderful. But really, Nancy's the one that, that should answer the question. She was 57 years old, never married. Not looking for a husband, actually. She felt the Lord had called her to, to ministry as a single woman. Loved marriage, champion of marriage. Mm -hmm. But she didn't expect this, did you, honey? I didn't at all. But we talk, <laughs> in fact, we're going to be writing a book together in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. We're calling it You Can Trust God to Write Your Story. <laughs> and I've lived that way. Robert has lived that way yeah. as a husband of 44 years and then a widower. And then us in this new relationship. And... In every season of life, we're just learning you can trust God to write your story. That's okay, right. so I have to jump in and bypass a lot of the other stuff. Nancy, how did you learn to submit? Because as a single woman, I said, Lord, unless I get a handle on this, this the word submit, I don't think... Kind of sticks I in your throat? Can, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know that I can get married. So what do you say to that? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I think it's actually a precious word and, okay. a, and, a, and something that God intended for our good and our protection. But to me, the, the battleground, if, it, if you call it that, is in my relationship with the Lord. Okay. If I learn to submit to Him and to trust Him that He has my best interests at heart, that He knows what's best for me, um, that's really where the issue is. And then when it comes to marriage, first of all... We talk about everything. We pray about everything. I'm blessed to have a husband who is submitting to the Lord mm -hmm. and seeking Him and so and who values my input and my thoughts and gives me the freedom to disagree and we do that sometimes pretty we sure do. earnestly. We you know if, if we all agree if we both agreed on everything, one of us would be unnecessary, right? <laughs> but then there are those moments when he just says, I believe this is we, we've talked about it, we've prayed about it, but I think this is what God wants for us, and then I have to trust the Lord mm -hmm. to lead through Him, and I can say yes, trusting that if, if, if He's wrong, which we both are at times, then God's big enough to overcome that. So um, I, I don't see, I know it's a hard word, and I know there are a lot of women in really difficult marriages, and I'm blessed to have a sweet marriage to a godly, mature, wise man who's seeking the Lord, um, but I've got pride and flesh and self that kicks in at times. And, um, but I spent 57 years as a single woman learning to humble myself before the Lord, or trying to, not always doing it well, but also seeing the consequences of digging in my heels. And um, so I think submission is something for every person. We all have to submit, male, female, women, men. And so in the context of marriage, it's, it's really, do I trust God enough to work through this man. And it really is good news and bad news for a husband. Um, the good news is that your wife says, what do you think, honey? We've mm -hmm. talked about this. The bad news is the ball's in your court. Yeah. And so it really drives you to your knees as mm -hmm. a husband, mm -hmm. knowing that whatever you say, whatever you come up with, wow. after you've talked about it and listened carefully to your wife, if there is a, a situation that you both can't agree on, then, okay, you make the call. But that's a, that's a sobering responsibility, and we have mm -hmm. stories of that actually in the book that I've just finished writing. I was going to say, this is a, this is a double-fisted interview here. We <laughs> have uh, Adorn from Nancy. We have Like the Shepherd from Robert uh, that they both have recently put out. And you mentioned in Like the Shepherd, Robert, that a husband has to be like the good shepherd. And... and Shepherding isn't something that necessarily comes naturally, is it? Right. It doesn't look like fun either. Right? <laughs> yeah, and the, and the Bible is, the Bible is filled with that imagery. Right. And in case people say, well, that's not very nice to be called a sheep, the truth is that Jesus is referred to in the Book of Isaiah as a sheep. All we like sheep. So to say that your wife is a lamb or a sheep isn't condescending. It's mm -hmm. she's in good company across the board. The Bible has that imagery everywhere. But you had experience prior to um, marrying Nancy. You right. were a widower. Right. And so you had the opportunity to shepherd before. Kind of tell us about that. 
Yeah, I did. Uh, I was married 44 and a half years in 2012. Bobby was diagnosed stage four ovarian cancer. So my role as shepherd changed a bit. I became the full-time caregiver, and it was my privilege to do that. When I married Bobby, even though I had no idea what the future would hold, that's what I agreed to. That was my deal. Mm -hmm. And so it was a privilege, and I feel like the Lord taught me new things as a result of Bobby contracting cancer and the two and a half years that she was a warrior through the whole process. In fact, Nancy came to visit her at one point. They were friends, and you may know that before Bobby died, she told two of her friends that she wants me to marry Nancy Lee DeMoss, and she never told me that. So a couple months after we were dating, those friends said, you know, there's something I think you ought to know. <laughs> this is exactly what Bobby had in mind. Had Bobby told you that? No. <laughs> <laughs> we were both asking the Lord, is this what you want? And then after we started dating, we found out that that's what she had recommended to one of her friends, to a couple of her friends. Mm. Yeah. That, that, sweet providence, though. Oh, it absolutely. It was a sweet confirmation of what we sensed the Lord was already leading. And I got to tell you about this shepherd thing. One of the first moments when I was really taken by this man who would become my husband, early on in our relationship, he said to me, you know, I loved being married because I loved being a shepherd. I loved shepherding a wife. And he didn't say I loved what a wife could do for me or I loved how she made me feel or it was I loved providing this loving, grace-filled leadership for a wife. And my heart just kind of stopped and I thought, that I've never heard mm -hmm. a husband talk that way. I'm sure some feel that way, uh, but that was a really sweet thing. And for a very, I'm a strong woman. I've been leading an um, international ministry and um, independent in so many ways. But there was something in my heart that said, you know, this is a new season and mer a singleness has been a gift, a sweet gift from the Lord. I know, Valerie, you understand that. It's a lot of freedom to serve the Lord in, in ways that are different. Um, but now marriage is a sweet gift and both marriage and singleness sanctify mm -hmm. if you let God work on those rough edges uh, through whatever season of life he has you in. So Robert, what does that look like in everyday life for the husband and wife who are watching what does that look like? How does that play out? Well, if I may, I'll talk to the husband. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I would say is Luke chapter 15, the first of the three stories that Jesus tells about lost things, the first one is a sheep, right? So how does the shepherd, what does he do when the sheep wanders off? And by the way, again, that could sound very condescending, like a shepherd's job is to go get his wandering wife. Well, in, in truth, your wife wanders off all the time, emotionally, mentally. She's, she's not there. And so what do you do? Do you demand that she comes back and listens to you or joins the conversation? No. You woo her. You win her back. Um, I remember when our younger daughter was a little girl, she would get lost on purpose in the department store. You know this, right? <laughs> and so when you find her, your, your emotions are anger and, and gratitude, right? right? Okay. So uh, Julie would wander off physically. Well, the truth is when you're married and you look into each other's eyes, you realize that one of you is somewhere else. So as the husband, as the shepherd, my job is to call her back, gently woo her back and say, what's, what's up? How, how can I understand what it is that you're facing? Nancy may say, I'm, I'm not really up for talking about that right now. And that's okay. This isn't about force. This is about winning her back. One of my favorite, my favorite Aesop's fable is the sun and the wind. Do you remember that one? Mm -hmm. They're having a conversation. Who's the stronger? The wind goes first to try to blow a guy's coat off. And he's unsuccessful because the, the harder he blows, the more the man clings to his coat. And then the son says, okay, you're tired. It hasn't worked for you. Let me try it. And he comes out and he warms the man and he takes his coat off. So that's, that really defines this relationship, shepherd and sheep, the joy of leading um, and, and of the responsibility of leading, as I said, good news and bad news. But then winning my wife by wooing her. I can't change my wife. I can only change myself. So I, when I do that, Sometimes, most of the time, I do win her heart back. And that's, that. W when do you do that as a husband? All the time. All the time. You never conquer that, which is hard for a man. We love to win. But 
In fact, early on in our relationship, and I was being romantic, let's say, Nancy said, like, will you, will you keep doing this after we get married? <laughs> Good question, Nancy. Yeah, because men conquer, right? So you got the wedding, you got the ring, you got the honeymoon, done, right? No. No, you keep, you keep winning because both of us are sinners saved by grace, and so our heart draws us away from each other. So I have the joy of winning her back. Well, we have had the joy of having you both with us, and we hope that we can have you back again sometime on The Harvest Show. But thank you so thank much you. for sharing this, this wonderful love story that thank it's you. clear that the two of you have. And, and it's not really a love story between two people. It's a love story between three because right. God is right there as well. Mm -hmm. Hey, we want to make sure that if you need more information on this, check out our website at harvest-tv.com. And always make sure you like us on Facebook. Not because we're, you know, insecure or anything, but we have exclusive content for you there. We're right back with our friend Brian Bush. He's a proud papa today. He'll share with you next on Harvest.